three ways your ancestry will shape how APOE4 behaves in your brain. This explains why some carriers never get Alzheimer's. We are often told that APOE4 equals high Alzheimer's risks no matter who you are. Well, it's not true. This new research challenges that idea completely. In today's video, we're diving into a groundbreaking presentation by Dr. Aura Ramirez from the Alzheimer's Association International Conference on APOE and Lipid Biology that was held in March 2025. Her team looked at brain cells from people with different ancestries, African, European, and Amerindian, and found something remarkable. APOE4 behaves differently depending on where your ancestor came from. That's not just in theory, but in the way your genes are switched on, how they regulate cholesterol, and even how well your brain cells protect themselves. If you carry APOE4, this might be the most important video you watch this year. Let's get into it. So, the first insight is that ancestry isn't just cultural, it's molecular too. Most studies on APOE4 treat people like averages, and you'll see this mistake done over and over again, right? Clinical trials are usually done on white Caucasian men, and they expand the result to the entire population. But what Dr. Ra Ramirez teams asked was something way more radical than this. What happens if we stop averaging and start listening to biology at the individual level? Or the answer? Genetic ancestry doesn't just shape your culture or your environment. It literally changes how your APOE4 gene behaves inside your brain. Let's break that down. AD risk varies across ancestries, and that this can be at least partially attributable to genetic ancestry. All right, this isn't just about higher or lower risk just on paper. We're talking about how the gene function at the molecular level inside the brain's support cells like astrocytes and microglia. These glial cells regulate inflammation, repair damage, and manage cholesterol in the brain. But here's the twist. Their behavior can shift based on ancestral DNA patterns that control gene expression. In other words, your APOE4 gene might exist in the same place on the genome, but it might not act on the same way depending on your ancestry. Between Africans and European ancestries, there are differences in APOE expression and also in chromatin accessibility. This is spe especially true in astrocytes and microglia. This is huge. Chromatin accessibility refers to how open your DNA is to being read by cellular machinery. When it's more open, genes can be expressed more easily. When it's closed off, they are silenced. And what Ramirez's team found is that this openness varies between ancestries, especially in cells that govern inflammation and lipid transport. So in some ancestry profiles, APOE4 might be loud and disruptive. In others, it might whisper or even stay quiet. This flips the narrative, right? We often talk about APOE4 as if it comes with one fixed destiny, but your genetic background shapes how that risk plays out. That's why Phoenix champions a personalized approach to longevity. No one-size-fits-all answer can exist. You can't find an answer that is readily available for everyone on that planet because you are unique. You are unique because of your genes, your environment, your habits, and also your preferences. So you deserve and you have to have a protocol that is truly personalized to you. So we are building towards a future where your interventions are guided not just by what gene you carry, but how it behaves inside your body. Because in the end, your risk isn't just about having APOE4, it's about how your biology responds to it, and that response is more nuanced than we ever imagined. So this next discovery is pretty cool because it challenges something we usually take for granted in genetics. That if two people carry the same gene variant, let's say APOE4, their risk must be the same. But what if how much of that gene is turned on depends on ancestry? So these researchers found a small stretch of DNA called Block 10, buried in the non-coding region near the APOE gene. You can think of it like a genetic dimmer switch. It doesn't delete the gene, it just controls how loudly the gene speaks. So they used CRISPR to delete that stretch of DNA in brain-like cells grown from both African and European ancestries, IPSCs, so those are stem cells reprogrammed into brain tissue. Here's what happened. What we observe is that when we delete this region in block 10, APOE 
expression increases, but this is only true for the African lines. Let's pause on that. In the African-derived cells, deleting block 10 made APOE expression shoot up. But in European-derived cells, nothing changed. That means this small stretch of DNA is acting like a genetic break, one that's only active in African ancestry. It's suppressing APOE expression keeping the gene quiet. But when you remove the break, the gene suddenly starts shouting again. That isn't a theoretical difference, it's functional. And it helps explain something we've seen in real world population. Even when two people both carry ApoE4, their brains don't respond the same way. Which brings us to the key insight. They suggest that we have an African-specific repressor element uh, for ApoE expression within the this genomic region. This is one of the clearest molecular clues we've seen for ancestry-modulated Alzheimer's risk. In some African descent population, ApoE4 may simply be less active because this repressor keeps it turned down. Same gene, quieter volume. So while European ancestry carriers might face full force ApoE4 expression, African ancestry carriers might experience a gentler version, not because the gene is missing, but because the control system is different. This study changes how we think about genetic risk. Because your risk isn't just about the gene you carry, it's about how your body uses that gene. And that can depend on your ancestry, epigenetics, and cellular context. For Phoenix member, this is a reminder that personalized medicine starts with knowing your background, not just your DNA sequence, but your ancestral gene regulation landscape. And it's also a powerful call for diversity in Alzheimer's research. If all we study is one ancestry group, we risk missing the protective mechanisms hidden in others. This isn't just about representation. It's about discovering new ways to quiet ApoE4 and maybe one day mimic that repressor effect for everyone. Let me do a quick pause here. If this helped you think differently about ApoE4, please hit subscribe. Every week I break down cutting-edge Alzheimer's research so you can take smarter action, whether it's diet, sleep, testing, or something deeper like this video. All right, let's go back and talk about the biological tug of war happening in ApoE4 brains, one that might explain early signs of cognitive decline long before Alzheimer's sets in. Dr. Ramirez's team analyzed gene expression across ancestries and two systems lead up. One, lipid metabolism. Two, myelination. We observed that several lipid metabolism pathways are enriched, like steroid biosynthesis, fatty acid metabolism, and, and the PPAR signaling pathway. In ApoE4 carriers, the brain seems to ramp up fat processing pathways. Cholesterol, fatty acids, steroid hormones, even PPAR, a master regulator of energy balance and inflammation. It's like the brain goes into lipid overdrive mode. On paper, that might sound like a good thing, more raw materials for brain repair, right? But then comes the twist. Genes involved in oligodendrocyte maturation and myelination are downregulated in ApoE4 compared to 3.3, so opposite to what is happening with the cholesterol gene. While cholesterol processing genes are revving up, myelination genes are shutting down. That means the brain is producing more fuel but neglecting the insulation that keeps its circuits firing cleanly. Here's the metaphor. Cholesterol metabolism is like building gas stations. Myelin production is like maintaining the roads, and in ApoE4 brains, we're overbuilding the gas stations, while the highways are cracking and falling apart. Myelin is essential. It's what oligodendrocytes use to wrap around your neurons, giving signals that the speed and clarity that they need to function. Without it, messages slow down, get fuzzy, or misfire entirely. This imbalance, high fuel, low wiring integrity, might be why some ApoE4 carriers feel mental fatigue, slower recall, or processing issues even decades before any clinical diagnosis. This isn't just an abstract gene expression story. It's a real-world dilemma for your brain. Stockpile energy or maintain your wiring. If you're an ApoE4 carrier, your biology might be tilting towards the wrong side of that equation. So this insight pushes us to explore targeted myelin support approach, like omega-3s, B12, choline, and specific exercise strategies. And second, it pushes us to explore monitoring lipid metabolism, not just through blood cholesterol, but via metabolomics and functional markers. And most importantly, testing intervention that rebalance this pathway before any structural damage sets in. That's basically what we are doing inside the Phoenix, running these experiments, testing the result to make sure that whatever interventions you pick and choose to do, probably for the, end, the rest of your life and daily usually, 
are something that are moving the needle and that are actually helping and you're not just doing that on blind faith. So just when you think that the APOE4 couldn't get more complex, we meet a group that completely rewrites the pattern. These researchers extended their analysis to brain cells derived from the Amerindian ancestry. And what they found is a biological plot twist. In these cells, the APOE4 gene behaves very differently than it does in European or African lines. Let's take a look. In the Amerindians, these genes, all the cholesterol transport and biosynthesis genes are reduced in Amerindians compared to Europeans and Africans, and the other way around for the oligodendrocyte development and myelination genes. That is the opposite of what we saw in other groups. In African and European cells, cholesterol metabolism ramps up while myelination genes are suppressed. But in Amerindian-derived cells, it flips. Cholesterol pathway goes down while myelination genes increase. This suggests a completely different regulatory environment where the APOE4 gene is still present, but its impact is tuned through ancestry specific mechanism. That means these cells might be prioritizing maintaining brain circuitry over processing fats. And here's why that could matter. It is possible that it's because of this change in the regulation in the lipid metabolism pathways. It might be that ancestral adaptation, possibly shaped by centuries of environmental and dietary pressure have hardwired these pathways to behave differently. In other words, it's not just the gene that matters, it's how it's tuned. This might help explain something we've seen in epidemiology. Certain indigenous populations, despite carrying APOE4, often shows lower rates of Alzheimer's than expected. Not because the gene is absent, but because it's quiet or redirected towards healthier cellular priorities. This insight reframes APOE4 not as a static risk, but as a dynamic system influenced by ancestry, environment, and evolution. This is why we focus so much on personalization. You want to understand how your ancestry shapes your gene behavior. You want to explore whether your risk from come from overactive lipid metabolism or myelin deficits. And you want to tailor your interventions from diet to exercise to cognitive training accordingly. Because if some populations have naturally evolved protective uh, regulation, then our mission becomes very clear. We want to learn from them and we want to see if we can replicate or mimic that protective state no matter your ancestry and where you're coming from. So here's the big takeaway from everything we just explored. APOE4 is not a sentence, it's a signal. One that changes depending on your ancestry, your biology, your lifestyle. And across these four insights, we saw that one, your social environment matters. Education and connection can buffer even a high-risk brain. Two, the molecular breaks exist in some ancestry, naturally muting APOE4's harmful effect. Three, that imbalances in cholesterol and myelin may explain early vulnerabilities, especially in European or African lines. And four, that in Amerindian cells, APOE4 plays by an entire different rulebook, one that may be more protective than harmful. This isn't just fascinating science, it's a wake-up call because risk isn't fixed, it's conditional, it's contextual, and it's changeable if you know what to look for. And again, that's what we do inside the Phoenix community. We don't offer generic advice. We help APOE4 carriers personalize their protocol based on the genetics, the ancestry, the biomarkers, their habits, the environment, and real-world experimentations because you want to make sure that what you do works. And the overall goal is to beat the odds and defeat Alzheimer's. If that's you and you're ready to fight for your future, head to the link below in the description and apply. I read all applications myself. So mention that you're coming from YouTube and I'll make sure to show you some extra love. And if this video helped you, please remember to share it. That's one very easy way to support this channel and to support us. All right. I am Dr. Kevin Tran and thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.